Hello everyone, this is Berlin Biker and I am standing in traffic. Just kidding. What are we doing today? Well, I have officially hit 540 miles on my 2019 Royal Enfield Continental GT650 and I want to give you guys kind of like an update on how the first 500 miles have been on this bike. There's been a lot of questions on are I happy, what are my thoughts, you know, did, did I make the right purchase, all of that and this is going to be kind of, I'm not say a longer video, but it's just going to be a constant stream of conversation with me to you, you to me, potentially in the comments later on just why what i'm feeling about this bike is it is it worth the hype is it a good bike for you to buy as a beginner is it a good bike for you to buy if you're just enjoying nostalgic uh motorcycles um if that sounds like something that you are interested in keep watching um but first things first we need to go we have to talk about this fuel gauge this fuel gauge is notoriously terrible for basically not being reliable whatsoever. When I started up this bike, when I just left um, the dealership that I was at, I was at half tank. And now I'm flashing on E, meaning I've got nothing. So we have to find gas. And that's like a constant issue with this bike is that I never know how much gas I actually have in the tank. And it's, it's pretty scary. Tomorrow I'm going on a pretty long trip um i got a hundred or so miles and i just feel like i'm gonna have to stop and fill up every i'm gonna have to stop and <laughs> i don't know what this person's doing but i like it um we're gonna have to stop and fill up a few times because i i don't know what a reliable distance for this bike is yet but all right let's go find some gas Let's fill up and then let's talk about what's going on with my 2019 Royal Enfield Continental GT 650 because it definitely wins an award for having the longest title of a motorcycle ever. All right, guys. All right, just filled up. Let's put the backpack on and let's go. All you lucky people who don't have to carry around camera equipment whenever you ride, you guys are lucky. It's a heavy ass bag. Look at this bike. It does look good, especially with the new grips and the mirrors. If you guys haven't seen that video, I would definitely recommend go watching that. Boo, boo, boo. boo -do 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 -do. So, what are we doing? Sorry, I don't know. I'm singing the grease theme. Grease. I don't know. Um, this is from my friend Nathan. He went to Peru. He brought that back to me. I put it on my keychain. I don't know if I ever told him. He was a really good friend of mine when I was in Germany. Um, so I'm heading out. There's kind of like a peninsula that goes out into one of the Great Lakes east of Detroit that I'm going to go see. See if I can find some photos. So while I ride out that way, we're going to talk about this bike. Like I was saying, this is five, 540 miles on the ticket. I have not brought it in yet for its first service. That is scheduled for next Wednesday. It's, it's Saturday, so I'll be going in the next few days. Um, but it's too beautiful not to ride right now, so I wanted to get out there. Um, what was I thinking? So I bought this bike, as you guys know. I, I just moved here from Germany um, in March, and I needed a bike. And I really wanted to buy the Triumph Speed Twin, but it wasn't available in the US yet. Um, and there was no like real timeline of when that was going to be. So I bought this in like April, April 15th or something. And it was the first, um, it was the first Royal Enfield Continental GT650 in Detroit. Um, and the guy even said Michigan as well. And I think it, I think it was the first one in Michigan. Um, there was a guy who had a deposit on it Unfortunately, he was no longer in the condition to ride it, so he gave up his slot, and I, I, of course, picked it up real quick. I've done some small things to it. I put new grips on it. I put new mirrors on it. I took the mufflers off. Um, I'm waiting for a new exhaust system to come from a manufacturer, but they, 
they've basically been stringing me along and I'm getting kind of frustrated with it because I really want that bike. I really want the exhaust system. Um, they are, they're just a cool company. I want to be associated with them in some capacity. Um, so that's really all of the small changes that I've made to the bike. Um, all of that's on YouTube as well if you guys want to see it. Just watch. But what are my thoughts so far on this bike? Is this supposed to turn? No, I'm good. When I first bought it, the exhaust was, it was very whiny of an exhaust. I really hated the whine of the twin. It almost sounded like a supercharger. Um, and it wasn't, it wasn't an attractive sounding bike. And I also didn't like how long the mufflers are. So I removed those pretty quickly. Um, and I just basically took the, the mufflers off completely. And I lost, there's like 36 pounds, which is, is just crazy if you think about it, how much weight. It really opened it up. Um, it sounds great. If you're into that, like, you know, annoying Harley kind of sound in like a classier Triumph Twin kind of sound, I don't know. I don't mind it at all. Um, other people who don't ride bikes say that they like it. So it doesn't seem like it comes off as super annoying, which is good. But what else? What else? What else? This bike, so far, the gas tank is definitely the gas. Uh, what is it called? The gas gauge. There we go. Fuel gauge. Haha. -ha is notorious for being pretty awful. Um, I, I tend to be constantly stopping filling up the tank. Um, it's hard to judge like how much, like, what my fuel economy is right now, but I would say it's roughly like 45 to 50, like low 50s uh, miles per gallon. But it's it's hard to tell. I don't, I can't tell you because um, the gauge is all over the place. What else? The riding position on this bike is kind of aggressive for a cafe bike and i really like it i've had no issue oh that was interesting i've had no issue with this riding position at all i think it's it's totally fine um i think my my lower back is kind of curved my chest is in the wind i don't have there's no protection on this bike a lot of people put windshields on it i just i i don't like windshields on motorcycles i think they look goofy you know I also don't do a lot of highway and I don't have a lot of, I don't have a big commute. So it is what it is. Um, this seat is not the most comfortable seat I've ever sat on. When I first got it, I was like, oh yeah, it's totally fine. Whatever seat's a seat. Um, but coming from a Yamaha MT-07, where that seat was notorious for not being comfortable, that seat is like a lazy boy comforter. It's so nice compared to this. This has, it kind of gives you like weird hot points in like right underneath your, or how would you say it? Like a, it gets you some hot points on your butt. Um, I've definitely been thinking about changing that, which comes to another issue of owning Royal in the US is that there are not, I'm gonna repeat this multiple times, there are not a lot of parts out there for this bike that are easily accessible. Um, when Triumph, or when Royal originally launched this bike, they had all these images of this like a single seat with a cool matching cowl on the back, and it looks so badass. Well, it's basically impossible to get that. Um, I tried for the first like two months, when I had this bike, I was like, I really want it. Where do I get it? My dealer was like, oh, we don't know. I have no idea how to get it. Oh, could you send us a link on the internet? I'm like, no, because if I could find a link on the internet, I would buy it off the link on the internet. So I just kind of gave up. Um, I removed, there was like a hand guard back there and I just removed that and kind of like cleaned up the seat line, which is, it looks, it's okay. It's okay. But I really want that seat with the cowl. I just think it looks, it looks really cool. As well as the kind of like the rubber fork, not grime, it's the rubber fork boots. I think that looks really cool. And now I'm just afraid like how annoyingly expensive it might be to have someone basically disassemble the fork legs to put those on. It's almost not worth it. I wish it was just like they came standard, honestly. It's like a $20 part. Just put it on. Let me check out where we're going. Turning right and turning right on Garfield. That's a big house. I don't know where we're at. Ooh. Garage thing. Uh, oh, that's cute. Homegrown cider donuts. Can I get a hell yeah? Hell yeah. But yeah, that's something that I wish that was easier. Everyone's like, oh, just buy from India, blah, 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 blah. 
I not that I just feel like I don't want to have to buy something from India and have to deal with maybe it's gonna get stuck in customs maybe there's gonna be fraud maybe that I don't know it's just it's too complicated I'd rather just sit around and bitch and complain about it um, and hopefully one of the US dealers will have it um, what else what else what else the mirrors I took the mirrors off real quick I don't know if you guys already noticed that I'm an NRA mom cool I wish there was a way to like cap these. I probably can just go get a bolt, something like that. That might be totally fine as well. What else? What's going on? It's totally fine. Um, there was one incident a few days ago. I was riding about 45 or 50 miles per hour in fourth or fifth gear, and it seemed like I. I'm trying to. That's the best way to put it. It seems like internals missed the gear or something because I was accelerating with my hand on the throttle. Ooh. What I've noticed as well is, as you guys know, the Michigan roads suck, um, is that these tires, the ones that come stock on it, um, and just the bike, they don't, it doesn't do, it's not a very stable ride when it's coming up over curbs or like there are lines in the street where there's like pavement that's uneven. And it seems like on the MT-07 and like a street twin and like other bikes that I've ridden, I've never had an issue crossing over. I've never had an issue crossing lanes, but it seems like something that I'm more cognitive of on this bike. Um, I'm not sure what that, why that is. Especially like we have a, like a people mover kind of train set up in the middle of town that has rails all over the street. Not a big fan of being stuck in those. Not a fan at all. Yeah, so like right now, 55. This is this is basically how fast you want to go on this bike. Any more than that, it's uh, it's not the best. It honestly, it's not, not that great. Uh, like you feel the road under you, and like not like a connected way, but almost as like it's skidding. There's 80. So it kept going. Like you can definitely go past 80. I just don't know if you want to. Because you got this room. It's definitely not one of those kind of bikes that you can hit that daily 100 with. That's for sure. And now I guess the ultimate question is, am I happy that I purchased this motorcycle? Would I have been happier? Oh. Is this a good motorcycle bang for your buck? Absolutely. I would go to war if someone said it wasn't. For like six grand, you cannot find another motorcycle that is as well put together and brand new as this bike. Yes, there are other motorcycles out there for six grand that are used, but I guarantee you that they won't be this well put together. I think this is an amazing bike for the money. It really is. And I, and I just said that like three times in three different ways. But like, if you are looking for your first motorcycle and you want a bike that has that like cafe look, I wouldn't say go buy Triumph. I would say buy Royal Enfield. Honestly, I think insurance is gonna be better on it. I do, you don't need 900cc engine. Um, this is a 650 got a little less horsepower and a little less torque but it's the same bike it doesn't have the same level of fit and finish what's up bud my monster it doesn't have the same level of fit and finish no it definitely doesn't but you're saving yourself three grand and after taxes it's like 3500 um am i happy with this bike 
if you guys know a little history on me, like, I've been riding motorcycles the majority of my life. And when I say the majority, I mean, like, my first motorcycle, I was three. It had training wheels and a, and a kill cord that my dad or my grandfather would stand behind. And, like, he would walk behind. If I got out of control, he would just rip it, and the engine would die. I grew up riding enduro and uh, hair scrambled, stuff like that. I raced for a few years. I've been riding a motorcycle for a very long time. Um, everything from cat, what, 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 my first bike is purple Yamaha PW50. I had a Honda uh, XR70, XR100, uh, Kawasaki KDX200, KTM 250 SXF, the Yamaha MT07, Yamaha MT09. And now I'm on my row infield. I've owned a lot of bikes. Last year, from all the test rides and uh, motorcycles that I've, I was granted access to, I rode 18 bikes last year. 18 different bikes that weren't mine. Everything from the new Zero SRF to Triumph Thruxton R to what else? I rode an R1. I rode everything. I've ridden a lot of bikes. Am I happy with this bike? I, I like this bike. I like its looks i like what it has done in terms of like giving it's kind of cool to like be one of the first people to own a bike in the state and in the country um it's cool to talk about it and talk about your experiences and all that and it's been a good bike for this channel i think it's opened up to a lot of people who are interested in this bike in india and all of that which it seems like you guys are huge lovers of this motorcycle which is just insane um Will I keep this bike? I don't think so. That's that's the that's the ultimate answer right there. I don't think I will keep owning this motorcycle. I'll get through this year and then next spring, I'll probably end up selling this bike for something different. Um, I'm looking for something a little more exciting. I guess that's the way you'd want to put it. I'm looking for something more exciting. This bike it looks great. It's photographs wonderful. So I ran out of memory card storage on my GoPro before I finished up my thoughts. So I made it to where I was going. Beautiful little port. It's real nice. I like the water. This is Lake Heron. Lake Heron, everybody. Talked to a gentleman over there. Talked to him. He used to race bikes. He had a 1,000cc bike with a turbo in 84. He said he bought new. And it had 16 pounds of boost on the turbo. And I was quite interested in that. So I'm going to go try to find what that bike actually is. So let's get back on the bike. I, my phone died. So I don't know how to get home. I think I just got to like basically point that way and hope for the best. But back to this bike. Ba -ba -ba. Let's head home. Am I happy with this bike? Yes. I'm very happy with this bike. I think it has served its purpose. I think it's opened up a lot of new fans for this channel. It's given me an opportunity to kind of work on a bike more with my hands, which has been nice, knowing that like, I can't fuck this bike up too bad. It's not a Ducati. It is what it is. Oh, I forgot this road is real nice. Not real nice, but like, it's got a little bit of a curve. Um, I'm happy with this bike. There are some small things I would like to change to it. If I had like unlimited money, my thoughts, they have a new big bore kit that would take this to like 835 cc's. I would love to paint the tank like a British racing green. Something like that would be pretty slick. Um, oh, look at the fish. Formula power boats. Um, it would be really nice to get a bigger set of brakes on this. I'm afraid that if I put a big bore kit on it, I would need brakes real quick because the brakes are already kind of sloshy. Sloshy. That's not a word. Kind of is a word. Look at all these boats. I kind of want a boat. Do they have boat influencers? Can I be a boat influencer? I guess they probably have a yacht influencers. Um, it's crazy. Oh, oh it was a tractor. They got YouTube. Her on point. Evacuate. Evacuation. 
Um, excavation. Excavation. That's the word I'm looking for. I like that. Um, it's someone's little house. A little boathouse. This water doesn't look very clean, though. I don't know if you can actually like, go in it. Um, it would be nice to get, I don't I haven't seen any yet, but like a spring replacement kit to harden up the front suspension would be great. Full own suspension in the rear would be lovely. But like now we're talking about some big money. Like I just, I just mentioned a few things that would bring this bike up another three or four grand. And we're, you know, we're still a grand or two off of the Triumph like street twin, but uh, Yamaha MT-10. But that's basically like what you would want this bike to be. And then you just wonder like, will they ever make like a nicer version of this bike? Or probably not. That's dope. Look at this road. That road fucking sucks. No. Land contract. Why would you want to buy that land? It's already like flooded. bunch of little boats I don't know guys I will report back when I have my first service on what they've done and how much it cost um, maybe there's gonna be a fix for the fuel gauge just kidding um, I don't know I think they're just gonna change out the oil in the bike maybe look at the brake lines see if there are any bubbles in the lines anything like that I don't know what that was. It's part of my backpack. Uh, I want to be on a boat. Um, I'll report back on that, see how much the cost is. Uh, just so you guys have an idea if you're looking to buy this bike. If you have any questions, I don't know if this was a bit of a ramble, but if you guys have any questions about this motorcycle, please drop them in the comments below. Um, I'm pretty good at getting back an honest, and I'll always give you guys an honest opinion. Um, and if you're, you know, if you could, if you want to know, I'll talk, I'll give it to you. Um, uh, yeah, any questions, put them in the comments. I'll get back to you quickly. Good and or bad. I'm here for you. I'm here for you guys. So we're turning left. We're going to try to figure out how to get home. But guys, that's it for right now. Uh, appreciate you for watching this video. I'll probably make another one of these like videos once I hit 2000 miles. Um, the idea is that I hopefully can hit that before fall. Um, work has kind of slowed down the last few days, weeks. Uh, so I'm really, really hoping that I'll be able to like put some time in on the bike and get, get some of that saddle time in, if you know what I mean. Um, so yeah, if you like it this far, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And that is it right now. Berlin Biker is out. Bye, guys. GoPro, stop recording.